So where are you located? Where are you located at? One second, Rich. We're, we're jumping on live here. All right. Uh, this is Brian King here. Welcome to another episode of the Stigma Free Zone. This is episode seven. And today I have the privilege of talking to Mr. Richard Kaufman. He and I met not too long ago, uh, specifically because we were connected because uh, one of my dear friends and somebody who I support greatly in her ventures, Abigail Sinclair, brings me these fantastic guests for this show. And she brought me Richard. And in learning his story, it's definitely a story of redemption, is the best way to put it, where you've sunk really low in life. And then you have to claw and earn your way back. But in order to do that, you have to eat some humble pie. You have got to find that humility within you. And within that, the courage you need to, for, to move forward. And Richard has definitely done that in spades. So I want you to listen closely to his story and listen to those critical decisions that you need to make in order to move forward in that powerful way. Mm -hmm. So Richard, man, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I'm truly, I'm truly humbled to be here. Thank you. So start us off at the beginning. You know, before we went on, you were telling me about some of the serious stuff that you had gotten into in your life. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you a, a, a quick down and dirty. Um, I grew up a single parent, single parent household, uh, very poor. I went to about 10 or 12 different schools by the time I was in, uh, by the time I hit high school, uh, Dropped out of high school at ninth, ninth grade, uh, became an emancipated minor, and then joined the military, stayed for two years, uh, became a drug addict and alcoholic, and got kicked out. Uh, got arrested, had, had a choice of either going to prison or go to meetings. So I, at 20 years old, I got clean and sober, uh, went back into military, uh, did about total of 24 years, um, got hurt on duty and I'm blind in one eye. Um, so they put me out. So I, not only I lost my military career, I lost my vision. And during that time, even though I was clean and sober, I wasn't living a clean and sober lifestyle. So I went through a couple marriages and I was actually, uh, living in a car for about a year and a half. And, uh, after after uh, what happened in 9-11, it kind of turned my life around and everything started going back to, to, to the positive. And now I'm focusing on uh, helping people that are going through depression, um, any kind of health and fitness addiction, you know, any kind of health, fitness, addiction issues. Because even though on and off um, the last 30 years, I've been in the health and fitness industry working with at GNCs or vitamin shops. And uh, I felt this has been my calling to actually, you know, help people that are going through health, health problems, like I said, health, fitness. And now I got 32 years clean and sober. So now I'm actually trying to help more people um, with that, those going through those issues. And I'm very big on becoming a, a veterans advocate because most, most people don't even know that 22 veterans a day commit suicide. So I'm really trying to get the word out. I actually just met with the vice president of Madison Square Garden. I'm meeting with the, uh, the guys at the New Jersey Devils. They're going to start doing stuff for the veterans. Um, and just guesting on podcasts like yourself, trying to get the word out and just trying to get people to realize if I can do it, anybody can do it. There's hope in the world. You know, if I can go from a ninth grade dropout with no education to running a million dollar company now. Anybody can do it. Well, one thing I want to say about uh, education is there's a difference between education and schooling. Yeah. So you dropped out from schooling at yeah. ninth grade, but clearly life is giving you one hell of an education. And well, that's because yeah. you've been such an eager student of it. Yeah. Well, they say that um, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. That's the truth. And, you know, even though like I haven't, finished schooling at all. I've read over 6,000 books in, in my time so far. Man, I got some catching up to do. And it drives my wife crazy because I always have like five or six going on at any, any moment. She, Better than like, having your face in a video game or watching mindless TV all day. Yeah. 
So one, it, one question I, I have for you, Richard, I'd like you to take us back a little bit. Okay. You're talking about the, the single parent household, becoming an emancipated minor at, at a young age, having the, the addiction issues, living out of your car for a while. Would you say that there was certain beliefs that were at play there that kind of kept you in that low point? Um, well, my, my, my father bailed at three. Now, I just want to preface by saying um, I don't blame anything that ever happened to me on anybody but myself. So just let, you know, there's no, there's, you, you can never bullshit the guy in the mirror. So, you know, you try, whatever happens. The truth always it, comes out, right? Yeah. So whatever I did, it, it was my fault. But, uh, my, my, you know, my father bailed at like three when I was three months old. And my mother would always say, you know, oh, you're, one day you're going to end up just like your father. So I guess a lot of that, that tape recording just kept playing in the back of my mind. And the funny thing is I had, my mother had another sister. I don't know if you've ever read that book. Um, what is it? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yes, it's been a long time, though. Okay. Well, my mother and my sister were the were the rich mother. I mean, rich sister, poor sister. So uh, we would be the poor ones, and then my cousins were the well off ones. And so I would have to deal with that, them being successful and going to college. And then my mother always saying, "It's well, always being in the back of my mind. Well, you're going to be just like your father." So I had. So I figured, you know what? If I'm going to be, excuse my language. If I'm going to be a fuck up, I'm going to do it all the way. You know, it's like if I'm going to be the black sheep, you know, I might as well go all the way. So I think that's when it really around 12 is when I had my first drink around 12, 11 or 12, somewhere around there. And then it was just off to races. Now, that's an interesting choice that instead of saying, well, I'm going to prove you wrong, mom, I'm going to defy your expectations and I'm going to become the opposite of what you predict. And said you decided to embrace it. Yeah, because I figured, you know, if I'm going to go, I'm, you know, I might as well go all the way. And I guess I might have had them, uh, uh, what do you say, alcohol tendencies, the mindset that, um, you know, if you're going to do something, you know, go all the way. You know, if you're going to, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to jingle, you might as well don't be a half-assed jingler. You know, jingle all the way. And for some people that don't understand that kind of thinking, if anything, it demonstrates one capacity in, in human beings, that you can commit to an outcome, you can totally immerse yourself in it, and you can accomplish it, even if it's self-destruction. Yeah, what, it's and, whatever your mindset is. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a person, like I'm a kind of person where, like not even with food, like I, you know, I try, try to watch my weight, but as I get older, it gets harder. I can watch my weight, you know, my eating for like six months, but then if I have like one cookie, well, it's off to the races again, you know? So if you don't, you don't have one cookie, you have the box. Exactly. It's kind of like my, my friends would always be like, all right, I'm going to have a beer. I'm like, a what? You know, why have one beer? Yeah, What's the sense? The glass you got, bartender. It, it, exactly. And that was my mentality when I was drinking, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like even me, I'm very, with my kids, I'm very, uh, if we're playing sports, I can't just play to play. I have to play to win, you know, and I don't know if that's a good thing. You know, if, well, you know, if you're crushing, thing, if you're so, crushing your kids, like 80 to 80 to five. Now, one thing I want to put out there and we discussed this ahead of time is that you too have ADHD. Oh, definitely. Just like I do. And, and I, and I, but I think it's a blessing for my yeah, industry. I think it's a blessing. There's absolutely gifts involved. One thing, and this kind of comes out in, in our decisions and our perceptions a lot and this is one of the potential downsides. And that is the all or nothing thinking that tends to come along with it. Mm -hmm. It's all good, it's all bad. You're completely in or you're completely out. Yeah. So in what you're describing, that's kind of showing up. It yeah. showed up with your addictions, but it also shows up with your business. Yeah. See, with my parenting, I'm all in with my parenting. I don't wanna be a mediocre parent. I don't wanna half ass it. I'm bam, I'm in there, I'm committed, I'm involved. And the opposite side of that is when you start getting into habits that are actually detrimental to you. Yeah. So being aware of that tendency and what you give energy to, mm -hmm. do you give energy to the addiction or do you give energy to the mindset that's going to allow you to rise above it and heal? Yeah. And well, they, they say you, they say you have two wolves inside you. Yeah. That's a great, it, it's just whichever one you feed the most. 
is going to become the strongest. The wolf and, that's the courageous protector or the wolf that is going to just destroy everything, whichever one you feed is the one that wins. So, yeah. with, and what you described so far, you describe that, that balance and that conflict that a lot of us have very, very well. You know, you have those destructive tendencies, but you also have those ambitious goals that at any given time, if you slip and have one cookie, man, you're sabotaging your weight. Yeah. You make a decision to eat healthy, you're able to maintain that. And yeah. there tends to be that balancing act, that daily struggle that people go through. Mm -hmm. And just because you slip one time doesn't mean the game is over. Well, I was just talking to a, a friend of mine. He's, 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 uh, he's clean for about a year now. And we started talking about, you know, sometimes he'll have feelings of going back. And I said, you ever notice that the only times you feel like going out or acting out is it's, it's called HALT, H-A-L-T. When you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. That's when most people end up acting out and no matter what addiction it is. It's usually one of the four. So you're talking about an unmet need. Yeah, pretty when much. One of those needs is unmet and you need to fill that void, you almost get a little aggressive. Yeah, and a lot of times, like especially if, if people are dealing with kind of uh, – even addictions like, you know, even sexual addiction, you know, it's like, okay, my, my wife's not giving me attention. So somebody else will, well, boom, you're off to the races. And, it, you know, you could, or it could be, you know, even food addiction or the phone addiction, you know, like people on their phone all the time, you know, they can't hang out with their kids. It's like once they turn the phone on, they're on YouTube looking at kittens for four hours. Yeah, I'm working on that. You know, I'm, I'm often called on to, you've been on your phone a lot today. You need to put that down and you know, talk to the family or whatever. And yeah, I totally get yeah. it. Because That's why I like Sundays is a phone free day for me. Yeah, the, the phone I don't, has become, I don't post I anything on, on social normally. It's just about being with the family. You know, even Gary V says, you know, like when I talk to him, he's like, you just got, sometimes you just got to figure out your why and then the how you'll figure it out. Yeah. Being on the phone is probably the, the most immediate way to get immediate gratification these days. You yeah. get such an instant shot of dopamine that makes you addicted to that device, and some people don't realize it. Well, they say the average person checks their phone 700 times a day. Slackers. <laughs> you could beat that. Oh, easily. It's half the time is why my hands don't work at the end of the day. Yeah. So you, you went in and out of the military a couple times. Well, well actually... Um, the reason I, they threw me out the first time because uh, I was just looking through my, my records today just to make sure I was on point. They put me out for uh, underperformance. And the reason why they kicked me out the first time, because I got, I got in trouble so many times. I got busted like five times, six times. And then the last time they threw me out, and they threw me out because I was supposed to be part of a funeral detail for like a four-star general. I didn't think he was going to die, but uh, the day he died, I was in Dallas, Texas, and I was supposed to be in Austin. So I, I passed out and somehow I ended up in Dallas. Hmm. And I got back and they were like, all right, you know, we know you like the military, but the military doesn't like you. So they put me out. That was the first time. How did you get back in? Well, th what happened was, well, they, when they put me out, they put me out with an honorable discharge because it was a that drug and addiction generous. problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it was called, I forget what it was. Uh, you can get in after like two years if you have a waiver and you didn't get in trouble at all. So uh, well, it's like probation. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. And, and I got back in um, two years later and then I stayed in. Like I said, I did 24 years total, but I was about to get thrown out a second time, not for drinking, but for being a dry drunk, which means I, I wasn't drinking, but I was still an asshole. So they were going to throw me out September 14th, 2001. And um, after 9-11 happened, um, I lost some friends in the towers. And uh, I, uh, I, the moment it happened, something switched in my mind, and I dedicated my life and my career to the people that we lost on 9-11. And I met with the company commander and the first sergeant, 
the next day. You know, I told them my story. They're like, all right, we're going to give you another chance. And, uh, you know, because when you're an addict, you can talk yourself out into or out of anything. But this was real heartfelt. You know, I was actually in there crying. And uh, they're like, all right, we're going to give you another chance. So um, I changed my whole life, my whole career, my whole ment mentality changed. Um, and I went from almost being kicked out to being two years later, being nominated for soldier, of the soldier of the year. Wow. And the funny thing is um, even like when I, we eventually, I eventually moved to South Carolina and then I moved back to New Jersey, but I was going to drill in South Carolina. So I would drive 750 miles each way to go to drill. And I never missed a drill again. So my guys would be like, Sarge, I can't make it in today. And I'm like, dude, I just drove 750 miles. You live right around the corner. You have to make drill. There's no excuse you cannot make drill. And my life, you know, my everything changed on 9-11. That's why when, like me, my wife says, why do you watch that shit all the time? I said, because I have a different perspective on it. If 9-11 didn't happen, I don't think I would be here today. And that's one thing that, can happen in a person's life that they can feel conflicted about, which is, man, I don't want to think that my life is now positive and meaningful because other people lost a husband or a wife or a mm -hmm. friend. Yeah. When the reality is it, it isn't that that particular bad thing was necessary and people had to suffer for you to thrive. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of you looking at it through the lens of how do I make use of the fact that I'm still here? Yep. Yeah. You know, I had cancer when I was 18. I saw very good people that I got to know, fathers and peers die when I got to live. And I had survivors go for the longest time mm -hmm. until I decided that I am going to make sure that my life is not mediocre, that I live every moment with complete gratitude and complete purpose so that mm -hmm. the time I've been gifted with is not wasted. And I help keep those folks alive by telling their story. Yep. my experience with them. Mm -hmm. So you're honoring your friends by living well. Yeah. And by caring for those that continue to suffer, in this case, veterans, by virtue of their military service. And that's just beautiful because people, so many people are ignorant to how our veterans are suffering. Yeah. And well, really I mean, I got to say, I mean, to be all honest that, you know, I, I hear a lot of people complaining about the Veterans Administration and everything. The veterans in New Jersey is awesome. They do a great job. They help a lot of people. Um, I have no problem getting in to see my doctors. So I've been totally blessed with uh, the, the VA in New Jersey. So, you know, people, it, things aren't as bad. And never, things are never as good as they seem or as bad as they seem. So well, hopefully at some point they'll develop some uniformity within the system because yeah. it, it's the inconsistency in care in the VA. That's one of the big problems. Yeah. As, as you know, there are some out there that are the complete opposite. People mm -hmm. are dying on the waiting list yeah. in the VA, and there's ways so that that doesn't happen. So hopefully there's improvements. Yeah, I, I've seen some improvements so far. Like they have a new policy in place where if they can't get in to see you within 90 days, you can actually go into a, to see an outside physician. That's been improve, approved over the last couple months. So that's actually helping out a lot of people to, to clear up that black backlog. I hope it gets to people in time. It's definitely a start. Yeah. Hopefully there'll be more improvements as well. Yeah. So that's with, why I'm really tripling down on, how, try, you know, trying to t talk to people about, you know, not just veterans, but people that are dealing with depression, you know, people are, that are dealing with, you know, addiction tendencies because it's, it's out there, but it's not really out there, you know? So tell us more about specifically what are you doing to help veterans and the other people that, you now serve? Well, um, well let me tell you how, how this pretty much all just started. It's only been about uh, probably maybe five months now. So it hasn't really been very long. I mean, I've been helping people in the AA and NA program. I've been a, a sponsor for going on 25 years. But uh, what happened was, well, two things happened. Um, I had two uncles and uh, 
one passed away when he was like 52, 53. Now he was a Christian man. Everybody loved him. Um, when he died, like thousands of people showed up to his funeral. Wow! And he he and they're giving him stories about how he would help people out and and people like you know he wouldn't want to talk let anybody know about it. You know he just want he was that guy. He was that guy that everybody loved. And then uh, when my uncle just died, probably about five months ago, another uncle he was like seventy five. But he was just your average guy. You know, he was just, you know, took stood with himself. And and uh, when he died, like only his family showed up, you know, there was like nobody else there. It was kind of like he really didn't do anything, you know, besides kids and have family between the hashtag of when he was born and when he died. It was just he was the average guy. And I was sitting in bed at night. and I'm going, fuck, what, who's going to show up when I die? I'm like, so what happened? I said, I, you know what? I want there to be so many people when I die, they got to have four or five services. I want people to show up just to make sure I'm dead. You know, I want to be able to affect millions of lives. And it really started me getting to think, you know, what's the best way to, to start to help people? Because if you go to a meeting, you could probably talk to 12 people. That's all you can, you know. But if you go on a podcast or if you public speak, you can, it's called, you know, it's that ripple effect. I might not know I'm helping somebody, but it's changing their family down the road. So I'm like, so I started really doubling down on a uh, podcast. So like my friend Donnie invited me on his podcast. We were talking about, you know, how I've been in the health and fitness. fitness. He's like, I don't want to hear about that shit. He's like, I want to hear about what you're doing to help people. He's like, you have such a story. You know, from coming from homelessness, drug addiction, to being clean, helping people, and running a million-dollar business. He's like, you have a story of redemption. People love a Rocky story. They love a comeback story. He says, that's what you need to be focusing on in your life. And that's so what I've been focusing on probably running? the last five years. Yeah. What's the business you're running now? General Nutrition Center. Okay. So are you like a franchisee? Yeah, I'm, I'm partner with a, a franchisee, yeah. Okay. So yeah. you're helping people with vitamins and supplements to get healthier, feel better in their own body. Mm -hmm. Because there's the old saying out there that if, you know, you don't have your health, you don't have anything. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking uh, as somebody whose cup runneth over and health difficulties, I honestly know what I can do when it, when I have a better day, when yeah. I'm feeling good and have my energy about me, I've been eating better. I've been you know, eating more clean. I'm on a, a special diet to drop a lot of weight, which I have too much of. And I've been feeling- What are you on keto? Yeah, doing keto. Okay. And I've been feeling awesome. And I've only been out a week and a half. I've lost about eight pounds. Yeah. And I just, I love the way I'm feeling. I finally got a medication for my MS that's helping control the symptoms. Okay. So getting those right tools in place so that my body- has more capacity to produce. Yeah, I'm able to do more of the work that I want to do for people. That's it. So you health, know? health is so huge, and it's well, great that you're doing your part. Health is wealth. And I had one of my uncles that passed away. I had a lot of uncles, so um, he had he only had like an eighth grade education, um, but he died a multimillionaire. And when he died, he says, "Son," he says, "I have all this money, and I can't buy back a single day." He says, you don't own shit in this world. He says, somebody owned the house before you owned it. Somebody's going to own it after you own it. God is just letting you play with his toys for a while. So, and he said, you know what? You have to be humble. He says, because in the end of, in the, end of the chess game, both the kings and the pawns end up at the same box. So it's like, you know, you know, a lot of people, like I'll help people, they'll, they'll message me on Facebook and you know, I'll help them with their health issues. And they're like, well, how much do you want? And I'm like, nothing. Just pay it forward. You know, I don't want anything. You know, I'm not doing this for money because I just want to help people out. Because after I came back from my accident in the military, you know, God gave me a second chance. So I'm just living on, you know, I'm just living on this. All this is gravy. I'm just living on gravy time. You know, this is all just bonus. Yeah, this, that's what I do like this. You know, we, we both have to make a living, right? Yeah. So there are some things that you're, you're reasonably charged for. You got your vitamins and so on. Mm -hmm. 
But what I started doing is I actually, I'm actually moving away probably in the next month or two, I'm actually moving away from my own business because I actually started my own company. So I am actually manufacturing my own products for people that are um, dealing with depression, mental focus, and also people that are having short-term and long-term memory loss. Cause wow. it's something that I deal That's with. That's another conversation we need to have. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's kind of like I, I got my hands in everything, you know? But at the end of the day, what we're really working for is a better world. Well, yeah, because, I mean, what good is it? Like I said, if you, if, if you take money out of the equation, what are you really doing in life? Who are you really affecting? You know, if, if like my wife, when I was saying years ago, if I would have won the lottery, what would I do? I don't know. I'd just build a bigger store just to help more people. You know, money's not like my when my uncle said that he's like, you know, you're not taking nothing with you. You know, you came in, you came out on a slab, you're going in on a slab. Could be the same cart. <laughs> there, there are so many people, you know, you hear about news all the time that are essentially hoarding money. Mm -hmm. They're sending it in, in offshore accounts and their identity is wrapped around their balance. And mm -hmm. they're not leveraging that money to improve anything except their margins. Yeah. When the reality is there's so much good that could be done with it, with that yeah. kind of energy. And fortunately, we have platforms like Facebook where yeah. you and I can get together and have these kinds of conversations and impact people's perceptions of what's possible for them. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. I just I try to live in it. I have a, I guess I have a different perspective on a lot of things like, you know, I live in a nice house. You know, I got three beautiful children. I got a beautiful wife. Um, but I lived in a car. So it's kind of like, OK, you know. I can survive anywhere, you know, just, just having a house to have a house doesn't mean, you know, anything, you know, I have a nice car. Okay. But what happens if I lose a car, you know, having that whole military mindset, like my wife says, well, do you like New Jersey? I'm like, no, but it's like another deployment. You know, I just think of it that way. It's kind of like it. I can suck it up and drive on anywhere that I go. You know, I, I, I can fit in with anywhere I go. So if you have that mindset of, you know, whatever happens in life, I'm okay with it. I'm living on borrowed time. You know, this is just, this is just gravy time. So money doesn't really mean Jack, you know, as long as I could, I'll ask my wife because she's the head of the house anyway. Um, if I can go buy a new guitar, she says, yes, I'm happy. You know, like she want, like, she's like, well, what do you want for my birthday or Christmas? I'm like nothing. I, I have everything I want in life. You know, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, it's like once you have an attitude of gratitude, it's life seems to open up. So now yeah, that, that's that's pretty much what I, you know, just trying to help out now as many people as I can give hope because there's not a lot of hope out there. You know, you, you know, you hear all this negative shit. Excuse my language again. You know, you hear all the negative stuff on TV. I don't even put TV on anymore. My wife's like, well, well, did you hear what happened today? I'm like, if it didn't happen on ESPN, I don't know if it even happened. Yeah, TV these days is pretty much a provider of one thing, fear. Yeah. And we sure as heck don't need any more of that. So what I do is on my way to work, I listen to all my podcasts. And on my way to, way to work, my way home, I listen to podcasts. So, it's, or, you know, because I, I think if whatever you put in your mind, like I was talking to a, a guy, his name is Quinn. He's got a, uh, a very big podcast and he deals with people that, you know, they're high level earners. And he was telling me that most of the guys that like he was this guy, he didn't have any friends when he was growing up. So he would actually start reading books by certain people and they became his peers in a way. Because, that you know, those are the people that he started not physically hanging out with, but if like, if you're listening to like you, you know, your podcast, if you're listening to Ed Milet, if you're listening to Gary V, eventually those people are going to start becoming your, eventually they're, they started as your mentors and eventually hopefully they become your peers. Cause they say you're, you're the average of the top five people you hang out with in your life. If you're the, if you're the richest one in your five, then you need to find another five. So you're always stepping up your game. You have to, you know, if you know, like I'll be 50 next month. I mean, January, it's like, I'm just starting. 
you know, I'm just I'm just getting the ball rolling. I mean, if Keith yeah, Richards, I mean, if the Rolling Stones could have kids at 77, what the hell am I doing? Yeah. So, and you know, Richard that, Kaufman can overcome the stuff that he has and he's just getting started. What can I do? Exactly. That's the thing, you know, because I just want to if people see our they, people love a redemption story. You know, they love that's why the Rocky films were so because people can relate, you know, somebody that's been down in the dumps and then they come back. So, you know, some people they will think, well, maybe I can do it. You know, maybe, you know. I, I can, maybe I can start that ripple effect in somebody's life. I think you already have. I, I think that it's happening, but you know, it's kind of like, like you were saying, it's for a while it was, I was doing mostly just, I was doing the health, the fitness and the addiction. And now it's starting to narrow. I'm starting to narrow my focus, like you were saying. And like, I was involved in so many groups, but they they're not getting me where I want to be. So now it's kind of like I'm daily, daily. It's kind of shrinking my, my focus, you know, like shrinking my cone, but the end of the cone is huge, but the beginning, the beginning of the cone is starting to get smaller and smaller. So if folks want to continue to follow you on your journey, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, they can, they can hashtag supplement guy NJ which is new for New Jersey because everything that I do, whatever I post, I always hashtag that because Gary V I said, I talked to Gary. I met him a couple months ago at his father's uh, wine store. I'm like, Gary, what would be the one thing you would recommend for me to do? Like, make yourself a hashtag. So now what I did is like when somebody clicks on that, they can see everything I've done over the last eight months. That's a so it, idea. So it goes to my, you know, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my tr- my Pinterest, my blog, it goes everything into one. And um, or they could just follow me on Facebook and oh, I, they can't. Uh, I can't accept any more friends because I'm at the 5000 limit. But, but they can, can follow you, but they can follow me. And also I'm available seven days a week. All they have to do is message me on Facebook and um, I'm, I'm there for them to help them out with whatever I can. Like I said, and I, I don't, I don't charge for, you know, and I only sell my one product and I only promote it maybe once, once or twice a week. Cause you know, it's, I don't want to be that guy, that infomercial guy. <laughs> I hate that. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, well, what products do you, do I use? And I tell them, well, I only use one product to help with my, ADD and stuff like that because I we came up with a natural form of Adderall without any of the side effects, you know, without any of the it's because uh, being in a program I can't have anything with uh, yeah, no stimulants or anything like no, that. No, I mean it has it has caffeine in it, but it it's, doesn't have anything that that can cause any uh, negative effects or any any kind of um, I can't have any like even when I I got hurt and in the military. I, that's how I lost my vision. I'm like, doc, I said, you know, I can't have anything, no painkillers. I can't have any of that. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, because I'm not going back to day, day one after 30 years. Uh, so I can't. So that's why we developed this product that for people that, um, that want to, that need more focus and need more energy and everything, but don't want to take Adderall because of the side effects. That's beautiful. You love, I just love how mother you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm-hmm. You needed something to solve an important problem for you, but without the addictive impact it could have. And you made the solution. Yeah. That's beautiful. And of course, anybody that wants to learn more about that can contact you through Facebook. Yep. And Richard, I just want to thank you again for sharing your time, your very generous heart, and your very courageous story. Thank you, brother. Well, hopefully I can help, um, you know, some some of your viewers with you know, whatever they're going through. And if you have any questions about the keto, I, I specialize that. And I'm, I'm actually doing some articles for my blog about the keto diet. And my wife is on the keto diet and she makes these awesome fat bombs. They're awesome. And so I'll definitely follow up with you. So yeah. everybody who's been watching and commenting, thank you from the bottom of my heart for showing up and giving us your time and attention. 
If you have any questions for me or Richard, just drop a question in the comments section and we'll get right back to you. And thank you. Thank you to all your, all your listeners. I, I, I'm really humbled to actually be able to be here today. Thank you. It's been our honor and our pleasure, Richard. So thank you again for watching. Please share this with people that you think could benefit from it. Until next time, this has been the Stigma Free Zone with Brian and Richard. Take care. We'll talk again soon. God bless.